At Norway Chess 2023, Super Grandmaster Norderbeck Abdul Satorov tried to outsmart his opponent with a theoretical novelty that based on a real strategical idea. And he took this idea, I believe, from the famous and interesting game of Vladimir Kramnik. Let's learn this secret strategy that you can use in your own games, by the way, and that will be very useful for you to improve your positional understanding. My name is Pavel Martinov, I welcome you to my YouTube channel, and let's start. In that quite calm Sicilian position, Noderbeck played Rook G8. Black's idea is to push G5 pawn, using this pawn on H3. To push g4 later, open the g file for the rook and start a checkmate attack to the king. Looks very interesting, but very risky. And unfortunately to Nutterbag, his opponent was really ready to this. He played the strongest d3, h6, promoting the g5, because bishop is controlling g5 like a knight, so we need to have more pressure on g5 square. And here was a B for a magnificent move. The first line of the computer seems that Ariane Tari was really well prepared to this game. The idea of B4 is after takes, I'm playing A3. And my basic idea is to make this pawn out of the center to build up a strong center and to have this diagonal as well. So B3, the strongest move Abdul Satorov played. And right now C takes B3 is not that good because the pawn structure right now is destroyed. And that's why white played the strongest c4. So the idea is to take on b3 with the uh, queen or maybe with the knight after knight a goes to d2 and to, to save this magnificent pawn structure in the center. Uh, black racked g5, takes on b3, g4, takes, takes, and d4. And on this position, we can say that white's really better because the king is well protected with the bishop. Yes, the rook is not that active and it's hard to imagine where this king will go. And by the way, white, they have strong center. Uh, in the following game, Abdul Satorov won in the end. But still, after the opening, white, they was better. But from whom Abdul Satorov took this idea? Let's go a bit back and see the magnificent game of Vladimir Kramnik, who first produced this idea on the very strong candidates tournament and won with black with the such idea. Vladimir Kramnik played against Levon Aronian. It was a very strong candidates tournament. So after calm start, I mean Rue Lopez system, anti Berlin, D3, uh, Kramnik shocked Aronian with some opportunity. H3 and actually, but after this game, in such structures, h3 before black doing a castle seems very risky right now. So firstly, we need to wait the castle of black, and only after we should push h3. It's like a tip you can you can take to your games. And rook g8, a magnificent move. Right now, basically, is the first line of the computer. But let's go to the past, to the 2018 when the game played. No one played like this. It was a very strong theoretical novelty in this position and I can imagine that white Levon Aranian, he was really shocked with this. So he played king h1, trying to avoid the king from the g line, knight h5. h6 was also possible with the same idea to go g5 and was basically also interesting. Knight h5 is the same idea. I want to push g5 because I connected my queen to defend the g5 uh, square against this pair of uh, white pieces. So, c3 is a first mistake of Aronian. The best was to play knight c3, for example, g5, and here knight f5 is possible. So the tactical mess starting around. Yes, because the h5 knight is hanging, basically. And here, like, some weird variation that can be is like this, and this position is very, very complicated. So black can follow with bishop d7, castle long, now the king is not that safe, and from the practical side I can say that this position is better for black. I mean, to play, I'm not speaking about the real uh, assessment of this position. So, returning back, knight c3 didn't appear in the game, Aronian played c3, uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think that he as idea was to play d4 uh, in some cases, uh, following knight d5 as well. And after g5, he basically played knight d5. d4 was also possible, but I believe that even this position after bishop b6, black wants to push g4. Uh, the bishop is not out of the game because d4 can uh, be hanging somewhere, even after I will go long castle. And I believe that this position, again, from practical view, it's better to play with black here. So knight f5, Aronian accepted the challenge to play in a huge game. g4. We're not taking on e5 because like h5 is hanging as well. d4 is possible in some cases. So g4, we're doing our stuff. And basically, it's impossible to take on g4 because the checkmate that is following is really brilliant. Queen h4, king g1, and knight g3. And using this pin, this pawn can't take on g3. And you can't prevent queen h1 checkmate. For all moves, I don't know, like knight 2 I'm coming with queen h1 checkmate, so really beautiful. That's why after g4, he played d4 to block this in bishop. Bishop d6, g3 here. Just the move to make the position safety. Bishop takes e5. Interesting, interesting. Takes, takes on e5. And here, Aronian played queen's d4. And Vladimir... Uh, didn't want to exchange queens. He played queen e7. Again, from the practical side, I think that is a brilliant decision because your opponent is under pressure um, and the position is getting really, really interesting. For example, it was a he was able to take like this. For sure, he is doing an advantage here, but to save queens from the practical side is a very magnificent solution. So h4, uh, trying to make the king safe c5, queen c4, here, and this maneuver a white queen basically is not that good because I took some tempos to uh, finish the development and I'm doing really well here with black. And after uh, next move that Vladimir produced f5, the position of white starting to be very dangerous. Basically, I want to unlock this diagonal for the bishop now that's why I want to treat this pawn on e4. So bishop g5 was played here, rook takes g5. Another magnificent element. Because after takes f4, I don't care about my pieces. Uh, I mean I mean my about my rook. My goal is to checkmate this king. And that's why I get ready to sacrifice and go up with my pawns. So queen d1 trying to bring the queen closer to the king. Rook d8. Tempo takes on g3. This position is basically really losing for white. The point is the queen uh, played all around the board and wasted too much time. These pieces are out of the game. And queen even quite far away from the king to defend him. So, knight f3 trying to finish the development, rook d3. The rook is coming to the game. Also amazing decision. Rook d1 and a really magnificent combination. You can even press pause here and try to figure out the next move of Vladimir Kramnik because believe me, it's brilliant. The move was bishop d5. And right now, the position is going to be really crazy. After e takes, I'm ready to connect my queen. And after several moves, we can see that the checkmate appears very, very soon. So basically, Aronian tried to play f3, maybe the last chance in this position. Takes on e3, takes on d5. If he takes on d3, I can go with the queen to e4, and I have f2 treatment, g2, queen h4, queen h2. So too much treatments, that's literally losing. And after even rook e3, check here, here, and the beautiful checkmate on the board, yes, this bishop and this pawns, they are doing poor, poor king on h1, nothing to do. So Aronian tried to play, takes on d5, queen e2. The queen is coming. Checkmate, checkmate ideas. Rook one seems like an only one, but after just g2, white resigned. Why? Because, for example, after king h2, g1, queen, with the check, everything with the check, because our queen is under pin, so we need to do everything quickly. F2 check here, because if the kings go up, I can even checkmate like this. So, king h1, rook h3, another king g2, 
F1 another queen with a brilliant checkmate. So, wow, really magnificent, really magnificent uh, game from Vladimir Kramnik. And basically, let's return a bit bank in the very end to this idea. So remember that when the pawn on h3 and you didn't castle, you're saving this possibility of rook g8 and g5, g4. That is a tricky idea that is quite popular right now, as you can see. So I hope that this video was useful for you and you can use this trick in your own games. Don't forget to subscribe for my YouTube channel, check other videos, I'm doing this for you, and let's learn chess together.